Hello everybody. Today I wanted to check out a ship that I just got recently. This is the Vittorio Veneto in World of Warship Splits. Unlike the ship that came before it, Francesco Carciolo, this ship was a real ship. It was not a paper ship. It actually fought in World War II and was a massive thorn in the side of the British in the Mediterranean theater. Let me tell you a bit about it. It retains the same 15-inch Parmesan breadsticks as Francesco Caracciolo, but with better range, slightly better traverse, and you get 9 of them instead of 8. And while they are arranged in triple turrets instead of the dual turrets on Francesco Caracciolo, they still have the same reload, so that's good. You get the same smoke as Francesco Caracciolo, but a uh, scout plane as well, which is very useful. You get basically the same secondaries, and it is tankier, but you- and it is tankier, especially the turrets are much tankier, but you still gotta watch out. Alright, let's see what the battle is. Lexington, Francesco Carciolo, Wichita, New Orleans, New Orleans, Minsk, and Z31 on the enemy team. Parsival, Vittorio Veneto, Atlantico, Wichita, Mayoko, Mahan, and Vaclin on our team. Alright. Epicenter on Cage. This might be a tricky battle, but that's what the Vittorio Veneto sells at. There's only two destroyers, so I'm gonna load AP. I think AP is the superior ammo type out of the two. It rewards marksmanship more since you're way more likely to get citadels with AP than you are with SAP. Well, SAP is better against destroyers, you should really only default. It d does default to SAP, but unless there's like four or more destroyers on the enemy team to start out with, or you're going up a flank where you know there's going to be a lot of destroyers, you should almost always switch to AP when the match starts. Your um, turrets are in a pretty practical layout, which means um, they're laid out in such a way that the frontal firepower is increased by 50% from Francesco Carcello, which means you can deal 50% more damage while bow tanking. Just captured. I'm gonna try and snipe the New Orleans. Don't use spotter plane if the ship you're trying to snipe is on is inside your range. It's not really worth wasting the consumable since you only have two. As we can see, the Italian dispersion was actually kind to me for once with that shot on the New Orleans. We actually dealt some serious damage with the five hits that we got. And we managed to secure the kill. Nice. Okay, there's a Wichita trying to creep up on us, so let's give him a nasty surprise. Actually, he's not trying to creep up on us, he's going around the island. Got another kill secured. It's often best to play the Italian battleships a lot like heavy cruisers, like you would play the American heavy cruisers, at least the way that everyone thinks you should play the American heavy cruisers, just relentlessly island, just relentlessly hugging islands for the entire match. That's not the right way to play the American cruisers, but it actually works really good on the Italian battleships. I'm just gonna try and blind fire that Lexington. I actually hit! Wow. I'm gonna turn so that the Z31's torps miss me, because if he hasn't torped me, I'm gonna be seriously concerned about the state of humanity. Yep. He torped. Hello, younger brother. I'm gonna focus the Lexington, actually. If there's a carrier in your sight, it's best to focus it, no matter how many other enemies are shooting at you. Oh, 
actually going to secure the kill. And we do. Nice. The well, secondary guns are equal. Well, the main guns are much less squishy than Francesco Caracciolo main guns. The secondary guns are just as squishy as Francesco Caracciolo secondary guns. So these secondary guns will get knocked out fairly easily. And the Z31's rushing me. He has to go broadside if he wants to torp. And he torped. And that's what happens. In World of Warships PC, Destroyers of the Oppressed class. In World of Warships Blitz, they are the true cancer of the game. People say that CVs are the cancer of the game. Honestly, I don't think that's true. Honestly, I, I think it's destroyers. I think it's destroyers. CVs are much less overpowered in Blitz, especially since there's no detonation mechanics. Or ramming mechanics. Yeah, I know, Blitz is boring. <sighs> we don't get any of the special features that the other versions do. It would be way more fun. Like, don't you don't even have to add detonation mechanics. Just add ramming mechanics at least. Like, please. If there are any developers watching this, please add ramming mechanics to Blitz. I definitely think it would enhance the game a lot. Imagine if that August Von Parsifal had the opportunity to ram the Francesco Carcholo. Imagine if when I was playing the Francesco Carcholo yesterday, I was able to ram the West Virginia that was absolutely wrecking me. It would have made it a lot more interesting, I'm telling you. Brazilian fantasy ship versus capitalist engineering. Wall secondary alpha. Atlantico secondary alpha is like absolutely ridiculous. You get eight nine inch guns with I think it's nine second reload and nine percent fire chance. Are literally Wow's broken scoring system again. Also, if there are any developers watching, please make Blitz battles longer. I think a lot of people can agree with me on that. Let's face it, 7 minutes is not enough time for a battle. Especially not in a game like this. Let's bump that up to, like, at least 10 minutes, I think, would be the optimum amount of time to have a naval battle in this situation. Got a Russian commander, nice. Let's play one more battle because we have time. Alright. It's a tier 9 battle this time. We've got Essex, Iowa, Vittorio, Amagi, Amagi, Vittorio, Cuniberti, and Benson on our team. On the enemy team, we got Taiho, Iowa, Bismarck, North Carolina, Amagi, Benson, and Kagero. Hmm. I think I'll have a fun time doing that North Carolina. Hey, North Carolina is especially AI North Carolina is really fun to beat up on in Blitz. I feel like I really like the Italian line so far. Like, I like it way more than the American battleship line. 
Although when I was grinding the American Battleship line, I was a very new to the game, so my strategy mainly consisted of run at the run straight at the enemy, hope you don't die, hope they don't focus you, even though they definitely will since you're literally just running straight at them. Uh. People who still think that's a legitimate strategy, it's not. Do not do that. It's Bismarck and Kagero and Amagi as well. Kagero's yellowing in because he's an AI. Italian dispersion is not kind to me, although I did damage modules, which I have a mission to do. Wow. This is what happens. The AIs and Blitz are so weak. The AIs and Blitz are so underpowered. Oh, I got a citadel. Nice. Farming secondary battery hits. Dot exe. Nice. Now it's just Bismarck left in my sight. A spotter plane. People who have played both Vittorio Veneto and Bismarck, which one do you think is more enjoyable? I think Francesco Carcello is more enjoyable than Nisenau, in my opinion, but I'm not sure about Bismarck versus Vittorio. There's the North Carolina that I was so excited to meet up on. Looks like I got my chance. Found a better target, never mind. Actually, I'll take one more shot, especially since he just took out our Amagi. Looks like our destroyers have this under control. I'm gonna go focus that carrier. Actually. I'm gonna kill steal. Taiho's going for the British strats. The reason I didn't damage con immediately is because I didn't want those bombers to set me on fire after I had damage conned. Alright. The remainder of this video will just consist of me farming this Taiho to death, so I don't think there's anything left to see in this match. Vittorio Veneto and the entire, the entire Italian battleships line are definitely worth grinding if you have the chance. So I definitely recommend them. Bye guys. See you in a bit. I won't be uploading for a while because I'll be on vacation, but I'll see you after. Bye.